Hey Theo, I love your tech, but does it scale? Yeah, it does. But it depends on what you mean by scale. I think scale is one of the least understood terms. The more I hear it come up, especially when people ask questions like, does it scale? <sighs> We're gonna rant a bit about scale because I don't think y'all understand it and I think we can do better. What even is scale? I personally like to try and think of scale in four different buckets. There is the traditional one that we think about a lot, which is number of requests before buckling. So if you have a server, let's say it's a web server that takes in requests, serves web pages, serves APIs, whatever like that. Scale often means how many requests can that take before it crashes? How many users can be hitting that service, asking for information before it chokes and gives up and dies? Either it blocks requests, it fails to respond to some users, or it just outright fails. That's the traditional definition that I'm sure a lot of you mean when you say scale. It's a few other definitions too, though, like number of devs, who can work at once. If I have a code base that scales to a large number of users, and then we have the large number of users, I might now need more developers to keep up with the features and the things that those users need. Because of that, there's a whole different type of scale there. Something that might serve millions of users might be really hard for a second developer to start contributing to. Like if we don't have a good deployment mechanism and a good way to roll out changes, and we bring on a new junior developer who can't understand the weird way we do things, that's not scaling either. And if our changes are conflicting with each other and causing us to not be able to meet our users' needs effectively, as the number of developers scales up, you're failing scale in those ways too. There's also the number of features in the code base. This is generally like how much code there is to deal with. The more code you have, the harder things get. It, even in something like TypeScript in the T3 stack, if you have enough features in a code base using TypeScript and you don't have good project reference separation, which is a manual way to draw lines and boundaries within TypeScript, you will quickly run into problems where the TypeScript compiler and the TypeScript server can't keep track of all the TypeScript because there's just too much code for it to process. And now your editor experience is gonna start falling apart. That's a very different type of scale than either of the other two. But once you have a big enough code base with enough features within it, you'll start hitting problems with those types of scale as well. And then fourth, this is one that Prime likes to talk about a lot that I think is important. Number of dollars per request. So every time a user makes a request, how much money does that cost to process and respond to that request? If you have a large number of users, this might go up linearly, this might go up exponentially, or it might just not go up at all. And depending on which of those it does, you either can or can't handle the amount of money that your service costs. That is a very important aspect of scale to think about. So taking a look at these, what do we do to solve these types of scale? Well. In the T3 stack, we have pretty good solutions. I'm gonna copy this and move it down. So what about T3 stack? Well, in the T3 stack, we have solutions to a lot of these things. For a number of requests before buckling, we have a fun one, serverless. Serverless means we don't worry about the number of requests in the same way you would if you had a server. In serverless, each request gets its own instance to resolve it. We don't think about how many servers can process how many requests because each request gets processed when it is made by a server that is spun up when the request is made. Because of that, our tech scales effectively infinitely in this first category. However, comes at a slightly higher cost to do serverless than server-based deployments. And you're trading the number of dollars for the number of requests before you buckle to an extent. There are balances to be had there, but those end up costing more money engineering wise, but generally speaking, serverless allows us to not worry anywhere near as much about how many requests our service can process before it buckles, because we spin up more when we need to, and they die when you don't. Number of devs who can work on something at once. I think TypeScript is a great example of something that helps with this. If you have a vanilla JavaScript code base and more than one person working on it, you're gonna start running into all sorts of issues, especially when you wanna rename a field or move something from one place to another without contracts and type systems and safety to guarantee that the code you're writing is hitting things that exist and is honoring the systems that other engineers have made. Something like TypeScript is almost necessary for your code base to continue scaling as more developers are working within it. Number three, there's a lot of new things that are taking this one on. It's actually been really cool to see. I think Turbo Repo is probably the biggest one. There's also Project References. 
in TS. What Turbo Repo does is allows you to break your project up into small pieces and then cache the building for each of those and have a much better experience with a gigantic code base where each piece is cached along the way. There's also Turbo Pack, which promises to go even further with this by caching individual files and their outputs so you don't have to recompile each file in a project when you change that individual project or project reference. All of these things will make it so your code base can scale much further with the number of features before the developer experience starts to suffer. Now, when it comes to the number of request or dollars per request, this is where we start talking about things like Rust, Golang, etc. I know a lot of people love to ask, why are you using JavaScript? It doesn't scale. In three of these four ways, JavaScript scales fine because serverless means JavaScript scales. TypeScript means JavaScript scales. Turbo repo project references and all of these things mean that TypeScript's experience scales too. Because of all this, JavaScript does scale until you're optimizing for this. Once your goal is to optimize for amount of dollars spent per request, because you have so many requests that they're costing you millions of dollars, at that point, you hire a primogen because you've hit the line of prime. The line of primogen is when the cost of your service is now massive because of how expensive your requests are. And once you pass that point, you hire him. And at which point he can rewrite your service in Rust or Golang or whatever else, which will bring your costs back down to a reasonable point. And ideally by hiring Primogen, he will save you more money than you were spending on those requests. So to be very formal, if you are not spending half a million dollars or more on requests that could theoretically be reduced to zero, and you do not have over half a million dollars a year of infrastructure cost that could be reduced by someone like Primogen, don't hire them. Do not adopt the technologies that help with cost scaling until you have cost scaling problems or are certain you will in the very near future. It is expensive to adopt those solutions because they cost more development time and developer wise. More expensive developers will need to take more time to build with those things that scale cost-wise because you're trading the expense of those developers and their time for the expense of running that code. And until that trade makes financial sense, it's probably not a good idea to make it. And you would be amazed at how rare it is that it does make sense. There are lots of big companies where it does, like the Netflixes and the Googles of the world. But even for new projects at companies like Netflix and Google, until they know the new product is a good product that users love and will continue using, building in that way might not make sense because of how much more expensive it is to do. So please be considerate when you're making decisions like this. Think you'll be surprised at how often the work you're doing does actually scale just fine in all of the ways that matter other than cost. And chances are you're not having cost scaling problems just yet. And if you are, you already know the solution and you already know what to do from there. Hope this rant was helpful. Should be a video being recommended right there. Subscribe if you haven't. Subscriptions are free. On Twitch, subscriptions cost five bucks a month. But if you pay for that on Twitch, you get access to the sub only channel in the Discord where you can talk with me and the crew, have all sorts of fun stuff. Anyways, this is a good video. I'm really proud of it. Hit the like button if you haven't. Take a look at the video YouTube thinks you'll like right here. I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.